Okay, we'll uh, we'll pray and get started. Yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this, um, Lord, for this opportunity to call upon your name. Thank you for this uh, opportunity that you've given us to draw close to you, Lord, so that we can experience, Lord, you drawing close to us, Master. Master, we thank you, Lord. We commit this time into your mighty hands, Father God. We pray that you would speak to our hearts. We pray, Father God, that um, that it be a time of uh, establishing of your word, Lord. Uh, it will be a time of establishing <clears throat> our lives, Lord, um, deeper, Lord, in you, Father God. Yes, Master, we pray that we will continue to draw life, Lord, from your word. And uh, may that affect and change and transform all areas of our lives, Father God. Lord, everything that needs changing, everything that needs establishing, Father God, everything that needs even removing, oh Father God, Lord, we pray that uh, that your word will, Lord, do that, Father God. And I just thank you, God, that um, as your word says, that uh, yeah, let, let faith have its perfect work in us, God, that you would have your perfect work in us, Master. We just surrender and yield, Lord, and uh, even as you perfect us from the inside out, we thank you. Uh, in Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, welcome back to Christian Leadership. Okay, um, let's take a, uh, just maybe two minutes. Maybe you can share what you learned last class or what stayed with you. One thing that stays with, stayed with you in last class. Uh, okay, Nikhil, welcome back. Um, one thing that um, you know that that stayed with you that you recall, yeah. Um, yeah. Right, right. Leadership is influence, and for either for good or bad, and all are called to influence. So there are, therefore, all are called to be leaders. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, leadership is also about serving. So it's not about being served, but it's about you know being serving because that's what the Lord set for us as an example. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so we may not be even aware of whom we are influencing, right? It can be. Um, so what is that about stage two uh, things? Right? <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it it need not be always uh, that uh, a senior person or a formal somebody with that formal title as a leadership who's influencing it can also be the other way, right? Okay. Yeah. You can even influence people who are overseeing you, who are, you know, yeah, that can, yeah that's also anything. Francis. Yeah. Yeah. So, so which means that um, you know um, there are several situations and circumstances in which people rise up uh, to be an influence. People rise up to lead. You know, uh, even during the course of the day, you will see that okay, maybe there is some some kind of a let's say a, a crisis, okay, and you see that okay, somebody rises up and takes the responsibility, takes the position of leading people through that crisis or you know, providing solutions and so on. So, um, yeah, so everybody uh, is a leader. So it doesn't mean that everybody is leading all the time. You know, sometimes uh, there could be these moments where people rise up and lead because it's, it's the, maybe it, it is their area of expertise. Maybe it's just something that they are called to do at that moment. But the fact is that everybody, you know, is called towards this, right? Okay. So anything on Christian leadership? Okay, as leaders, there's no question of misusing it. Right? It's a stewardship, right? Okay. <clears throat> right. Any, anybody online? 
anything that uh, you want to add right. okay so um so let's look at uh, we started with the uh, this first section of leading through time right leading through time so uh, which means that uh, uh, an extended period of time a season right so as we look at that, we see that a lot of things happen in a season right, or through a season um, uh, in, in the position of leadership. Right? And so we're just going to look at that. But first of all, you know, we, we started by looking at how the Lord Jesus modeled leadership. So what we can learn uh, from the way the Lord Jesus led. In fact, there's a whole ministry called Lead Like Jesus. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, been, you know, attended any of their meetings. The, you know, the, uh, I forget who started it. I think it's Ken Blanchard. <clears throat> Lead like Jesus, and it's uh, it's a weekend thing, you know, two days, and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, considering, uh, so the whole thing is about, you know, how Jesus led, and uh, and how we can lead, just like Jesus. Right? It's very. I would say very transformational you know workshop right you can I mean if you have an opportunity sometime to do that be part of it it'll be nice okay so we're going to look at uh, we we started by looking at okay as uh, when we when we focus on Jesus when we learn from the Lord how he led so first thing we see is that um, he knew the purpose for which he came and it was so strong in him ingrained in him right why did he come why uh, the, you know the why of his life. Why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Right. So if that is clear, then no matter what happens, right? No matter who tries to distract or take us away, right, we will always come back because that why is very strong. Why am I doing this? Right. So the purpose for which I'm doing it, right. When you say, okay, what are we doing? You know, it's about the details of what we go through. You know, it could be our, maybe, maybe our job title, maybe the the things that we are, our responsibilities. You know, that is the what, the details of it. You know, it might be whatever in ministry, you remember, know, pastor, teacher, you know, uh, homemaker. Uh, so you go about the details of what you have to do, right? You know, the responsibility. You need to be there at a certain time, have a certain expertise, and do that. So that's the what. But then the why is very important, right? The question why? Why am I doing this? Why am I, you know, doing what I am doing? Why am I in ministry? You know, why do I want to, you know, shepherd uh, this church? Why do I want to plant this church? Or why? Why do I want to do this? The purpose is very important, right? Because if the purpose is not clear and strong, then we'll be <clears throat> misled um, if there's anybody to do that. We'll be distracted. Uh, and, and when things get difficult, we will stop. Right? So we will say, okay, this is too too difficult. I'm going to stop. Right? So in the life of the Lord Jesus, when we see um, the Lord saying, you know, John chapter 12 and verse 27, we saw that verse, where the Lord uh, in, the, in the garden, right? he's saying, Lord, uh, my soul is troubled. He's speaking to the Father and he's saying, my soul is troubled, is in anguish. He's saying, what shall I say? Shall I say this to you? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came. Right? For this purpose, I came to this hour. Meaning that this is the time for which I have come. Or this is the purpose for which I have come. So how can I, excuse me, how can I say that, Lord, you know, save me, Father, save me from this hour. And even uh, when he was having this conversation with Peter, he tells Peter, you know, uh, and the disciples, he's saying that I, I must go to Jerusalem, uh, I will suffer many things, and this is how I will, you know, I will die. And, and, and also he was talking about his resurrection. Right? So he's telling them about that. Then, <coughs> sorry, um, if you look at Matthew 16, right, it talks about that. Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things.
from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Okay, so this is much before the crucifixion. He's he he knew it already. The, he knew the details of it. So he's just telling them this is how it must be done. This is this is what will happen. Excuse me. Then, verse 22, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Right? <coughs> that must be something to watch. Right? Peter's taking him and he's rebuking Jesus. And he's saying, Jesus, what's wrong with you? And then he's rebuking him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Uh, but he turned, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Okay, let's uh, let's try and continue. <clears throat> so, um, so when Peter says, "Lord, this shall not be," okay, um, so it's something that you know, Peter, in his all sincerity, he wants to he wants to actually comfort the Lord. He wants to protect the Lord, right? So it's it comes from a place of sincerity, right? In according to Peter, but the Lord knew the source of that, so He's saying, you know, uh, get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God. So He knew the source, and even uh, just before that, we know that Peter gives a revelation. What is that? He he receives that from God. From the, yeah, you are the son uh, of God, right? And then the Lord says that yeah, uh, flesh and blood is not revealed. So the Lord was able to discern the source and also not just discern, but also to go with what the Father wanted, even though it was a not a very convenient thing, not a very comfortable thing. Right? It is uh, about um, what it's, it's about life, it's about danger, it's about, uh, uh, you know, the, very painful things happening right and and by nature you know we want to protect our lives from pain we want to protect our lives from uh, danger and so on but then in this case <clears throat> lord is very clear and that happens when we have a clear sense of purpose so that's something that we learn from the lord right that as a leader he knew the purpose so as leaders that's an example that we we take a strong grip of what our purpose uh, for that role of leadership is you know, why the why of it. Why am I doing what I'm doing? It's good to question that and you know ask the Lord and 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 when the Lord speaks, when the Lord reassures, okay, when the Lord speaks and reassures and gives us you know you know that revelation in our hearts, then we'll be strong. We'll be rooted <clears throat> because the Lord has spoken. So no doubt, no turning back. That the Lord is in it, and that's the greatest reassurance that we we can have, right? <clears throat> okay. The second thing, as a leader, um, you can follow in your notes as well. As a leader, be selfless. Okay, selfless, which is the opposite of selfish, right? Be selfless. Now, hey, thanks, Adam. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
a lot of water. <laughs> Thanks. So as a leader, be selfless. Okay. So Philippians 2, um, verses 3 to 5, there is this exhortation. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, which means pride, but in lowliness of mind, which means humility. Let each esteem others better than himself, which means to honor others better than ourselves. Okay. So the focus is not on ourselves or what I can get out of this or what benefit can I receive out of what I'm doing. It's not that all the time. See, verse 4, it says, Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, okay, but also. You, know, you need you 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 can notice two phrases, right? Not only, verse 4, right? If you look at it, but let each of you look out not only but also. Right? What does that mean? <clears throat> you do this, but you don't restrict yourself to this alone. Not only this, but go beyond it, but also. So what does he say? He's saying, let each of you look out not only for your own interests. Okay, you need to do something. You need to, <clears throat> um, you need to be blessed in certain ways. Okay. But also for the interests of others. So it means let your focus just not stop with yourself. I mean myself, right? And, and the thing is that look out also for the interests of others. And it goes on to say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? So which means that being selfless um, is just the opposite of selfish ambition and pride and, um, you know, honoring oneself. Just the opposite of all that. So, the Lord Jesus was a personification of of this very thing that we're talking about. Right? He personified, he lived that in his life. So, as Christian leaders who want to understand Christian leadership, you know, this is a very important thing, very important lesson for us. Right? We look at Jesus and say, okay, the Lord, this is how you lived. Therefore, I'm going to follow. I'm going to do this. Help me to do this in the right way, right? So, like sometimes we can, we can say, okay, I, I, I'm humbling myself. I'm humbling myself. But it can be a sense of self. I mean, it's, it can be a sense of uh, false uh, humility, right? False humility, <laughs> where, where somebody says, okay, I think that's a, that's a good thing that you that you're doing. And then you want to say, no, 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 that's not. No. Um, it was good. What you spoke was good. What you shared was good. Uh, but then you want to say something negative about it to undermine it. Right? Like suppose you cook something and then somebody says, hey, that's a very nice dish. You cooked really well. But then if you turn around and say, no, actually this time it, it was not that great. You know, uh, I think the salt should have, should have been a little better. Uh, last time it was good. Something, you know, they want to say something to bring down the weight of what others are saying. Um, um, if, yeah, it can be true. It can be true. Maybe, you know, factually the thing is, maybe you just say, hey, thank you. But actually, uh, last time was, you know, so that can be true. But I'm saying, you know, as um, I think we're all Indians in this uh, class. Um, we have that as a thing, you know. Like, for example, if somebody asks, invites us home, when you go there, and then maybe they offer some snack or some coffee, what we have, we say, you know, no, we just had, right? We say, no, thank you, we just had and came. But, you know, the, but we don't even think about it because you didn't have it. It's been a long time, but you still, <laughs> but you, but you still say, no, 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 I, we just had, no, it's okay, I'm, I'm full, it's okay. We say it, and we think that, you know, it's a cultural thing, right? So, yeah. So, um, and and it kind of creeps into all areas of our lives, and yeah. So, uh, that is not humility, right? Or that is not being selfless. We think, okay, I'm putting myself down, um, 
like this is uh, humility no it's not it actually is the opposite like so what would happen is when you know of course i'm just digressing a little bit what would happen is if if the lord were to declare something over you and say that you are victorious or you, you are precious to me and you know you, you are so and so you are this you are the head and not the tail and you know, all those things that if the lord were to declare we would still continue to cancel that out by saying that lord no i am not that i am actually not that lord because we feel that when we put ourselves down uh, even though the lord is elevating and 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 putting us in the right place you know that's the truth he's declaring this you know you are a new creation you are sanctified you are justified and we say no lord i am you know i'm worthless you know and we think that is humility where it it need not be you know it, it cannot it, it is actually false humility right so um if you look at um, okay let's look at philippians 2 and about the you know, talks about the humility and of the lord <clears throat> Okay. So Philippians two, uh, let's just go down to uh, verse six, right? Verse five says, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." Verse six, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Right, verse eight, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So, verse seven, verses six and seven, and uh, seven and eight, sorry, talks about how the Lord made Himself of no reputation. Right, uh, the Son of God, who was, who is, who will be, uh, who is to come. and uh, and he you know the scripture talks about how nothing was made that was made um through you know everything that was made was through the sun and all that so he was a pre-existent one but he made himself of no reputation he you know laid aside that glory and came in the form of man right so uh so he became in other words he became a servant okay and, and we don't find that anywhere you don't find that in any other world view we don't find that but uh, god becomes man and in this manner to to so that man can be redeemed man can be you know lifted up and man can be seated with him in the heavenly places right so it's so something beautiful something wonderful something powerful right so it is something that actually protects the person protects the leader being selfless right being humble being selfless it's it's actually a weapon it is like a shield for the leader okay right third thing as a leader be obedient i think uh, francis asked that question so if everybody is leading who's following right you asked anand asked him huh? okay mm. so what is uh, you know how, how can how can everyone lead and not have anyone follow so, so i think we we kind of address that right we have spheres of influence we have you know circumstances and uh, situations where people are leaders we have formal leaders and so on okay but as a leader the lord was obedient he was obedient to the voice of the father right so that's something that we see uh, hebrews 10 and verse 7 says then i said behold i have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will o god right verse 8 that we saw just now philippians 2 he humbled himself and became obedient philippians 2:8 okay so being obedient to the will of the father being obedient to the voice of the leading of the father is something that that we see in the life of the lord right he being aware of the of the timing and what really the father wanted him to do everything right he was so in step so as a christian leader 
<clears throat> there is this is something that we need to aim for because we see it in the life of the Lord Jesus, right? Um, that we will be obedient to the will, obedient to the voice, the ways of God all the time. Okay, and again, it's not the most convenient thing, right? It's not the most convenient thing. It's something that we need to intentionally set our hearts towards. It's something that we need to seek, right? And and as a leader, to keep this as priority, hey, this is something of great importance for me, right? That I need to obey the will of God. So, what is the obeying the voice of the Lord, obeying the will of the Lord? What is it against? Sorry. Yeah, if you would say, what is what would what would what would this be the opposite of? So we can say, I, I should not do that. Yeah. So it's uh, so we see that uh, the 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 spirit always. The, I mean, talking about the Holy Spirit, the flesh lusts against the works of the spirit. Right, so, so when I say you know when we say uh, against um, whatever I will or I wish, what we're saying is that you know it's good to have your desires, but if it is contrary to the will or the wish of the Father, that's what we are saying. It's good to have your desires. It's good to have okay, uh, uh, you know I, I have this desire. I want to do this. It's, it's good to have ambition, you know, and uh, and plans and dreams and say uh, I, I I want to do this. It's good to have that. You know, we're not saying that, you know, I should be like a robot. No, the, the Lord himself says, you know, oh, what is, you know, he himself wants to hear what's in our heart. And um, so it's good to have our own our desires, our thoughts and everything and take it before the Lord. And and for that to have, uh, 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 that to be brought under the Lordship of Jesus. Right? So So that's the thing. So <clears throat> if it is, Contrary to the word of God, if it is contrary to um, the will of God, right? If it is something that is of the flesh, so that is what we are saying, right? And I think we looked at that, right? Um, I think earlier sessions also we looked at um, how you know when we always say the Lord's ways are higher than our ways. Okay, so His way, His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and so. That does not mean that every thought that you have or every step that you want to do is against God's ways. It is not. Because if you look at that scripture in context, it talks about the wicked person. It talks about the person whose ways are contrary to God's ways. It talks about the person whose thoughts are not in line with God's thoughts. Okay, And that's when the Lord says, my ways are not your ways, are my thoughts are. Uh, you know, much higher than your thoughts. Okay, so let the wicked man, uh, you know, uh, forsake his ways, and let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. And then the Lord goes on to say this. So, yeah. So, uh, just a thing to know that that as long as it's contrary, uh, that is what you know we're saying that um, it it cannot be in line with God's will, God's ways. Okay, so being obedient, uh, being sensitive. If we would keep that as priority, now I'm going to obey the Lord. So it would also mean that <clears throat> when we set our heart to do the will of the Father, when we set our set our hearts to be obedient to God and His voice, that whatever the other voices are, the will of man, the will of man again, contrary to the will of God. When you say contrary, it's opposite of. Right? Not in line with the will of because there sometimes you know we hear counsel. How does counsel come? Right? Uh, from the heart of man. God actually confirms, right? right? There's a word of wisdom. God confirms what is in our heart. God confirms that through other people. So we're not saying that other people saying some things, other people instructing is inherently bad in itself. But only when it is not in line, when it's opposite of what God is saying, you know that that is the thing. And it can come in all sincerity. It can come you know, like how Peter came and said, "Lord, 
let it, let it not be so it will not be far be from you lord you know it comes with all sincerity but uh, when it's not in line with uh, the will of the father then we cannot be obedient to that right okay the fourth one we see is um, be a servant okay this is something that we saw earlier also that this is a, a, you know a fresh paradigm or which means a, a very uh, a drastic thing that the lord brought about about leadership right that one needs to be a servant to the people who are whom they are leading okay let's look at that verses again those scriptures again matthew 20 uh, 25 and 28 right okay so let's um, turn, turn to matthew 20 and just look at the context of um, why would jesus say this okay matthew 20 and um, <clears throat> let's look at verse 20 matthew 20 and 20 okay then the mother of zebedee's sons came to him with her sons okay so the mother is bringing the two disciples <laughs> full, uh, re full on recommendation so kneeling down asking something from him and he said to her what do you wish and she said to him grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand another on your left in your kingdom but jesus answered and said you do not know what you ask are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And uh, they said to him, we are able. Okay, the sons of Zebedee, they, so they are there. So they picture the scene, the mother's kneeling down. Probably they made, made the sons also kneel down. right? So everybody's there. And then, you know, are you able to do this? Lord saying, you know, are you able to go through what I'm able to go through? And, and they said, yes, Lord. So, um, so I don't know how this whole thing happened, right? Whether the sons asked the mother or the mother said, you know, I won't, I'm going to ask uh, Jesus. If you're, if you're not asking, I'm going to ask. You know, I, I, and about the kingdom, you need that special place. Okay, you're doing so many things. You're serving. I'm going to just think about that. You know, it's not just one day they decided, hey, let's go and ask Jesus. And they've been talking about this, about the kingdom and about the position and, and all that. So they come and ask. Okay. And the Lord says, you will indeed, verse 23, you will indeed drink the cup and be baptized with the baptism uh, I'm baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. <coughs> but for th those to whom it is prepared by my Father. Verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased. Okay, When they heard that this has happened, the other 10 disciples, they were greatly displeased with these two brothers. They're like, you know, how can you guys do this? You know, we're all in it. We're a, it's a team. How can you suddenly go? And probably they said, you know, no, my mother only asked. You know, my mother said, you know, how can you do that? And they were very displeased. But Jesus called them. So this whole commotion is happening. And they were like, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Peter gave it to them. You know, Peter's highly volatile. You know, he just gave it to them. He shook them and maybe pushed these guys and... You know, I'm just imagining all kinds of things. Why? Why did you do this? You know, how can you do this? And then uh, the, lead, the Lord calls them, and then this is what it, He says: You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Okay, so the rulers of the Gentiles. So He's making a you know distinction between spiritual um, rulers, and He's talking about rulers of the world or you know, rulers of the Gentiles, and saying that they lord it over them, they boss over them, and uh, those who are great exercise authority. Okay, now leadership comes with authority. Okay, authority to speak into people's lives, authority to, to correct, authority to maybe issue instructions. You know, saying okay, let's do this and not that. So, so the Lord is acknowledging there is authority. It comes with leadership. But he says that they, uh, 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 what, what do they do? They use authority, great, ex sorry, those who are great exercise authority over them or boss over them. And then the Lord says in verse 26, yet it shall not be so among you, for, but whoever desires to become great, let him be your servant. So 
he excuse me so he makes a uh, distinction between what kind of leaders we are to be right to be a servant leader okay so which means that in our heart we humble ourselves and we want to serve <clears throat> so what does it mean to serve others it's good to say i, I want to serve but what does it mean to serve in uh, you know various mm -hmm. yeah to minister itself means to to serve right mm. yeah to consider yeah sorry to work What is, what is the thing? What is the thing, Anand? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can we can do that. No, no the, the, the verse that we just read, you know, I think it's uh, First Peter 2 that we said, where about, uh, uh, not for, sorry, just, just a minute. Um, uh, about Philippians 2, sorry, Philippians 2, 3. It says, uh, <clears throat> so this should be our outlook. Okay, your needs are important. Yeah, okay. Your needs are important because that's what helps you function, like needs like food, water, shelter, whatever. Your needs are important. But it says, let you look out not only for your needs, but also, also for the needs. So which means that others are also in that thing, you know. And you're honoring, esteeming others better than yourself. So which means that you're going to look for their needs um, first, put their needs first. That's, that doesn't mean that you are, you know, your needs don't matter at all in life. No. Right? Okay, so, uh, so when you're thinking of serving as a leader, serving, what is it that we can, what are the different ways that we can think of? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Google says be obedient. Uh, to be obedient when you say server. Mm -hmm. Give, a hand. Give a helping hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing benefit into people's lives, right? When you're serving, so when we have someone who serves us, right? See, let's say you have someone who's helping at home, or you know, they are serving. They are bringing benefit, right? Some kind of benefit, whatever it is that they're doing, they are helping. They are bringing some kind of benefit, right? So we are comfortable. We are helped. We are able to do our things better, whatever. So. In all our ministering, in all our leading as Christian leaders, the Lord is saying, you know, you will be a servant. You serve, you take care of, you esteem, you look at, which means that you, first of all, be sensitive and be aware of the needs of people. Yeah. And only then can you actually take care of it. Okay, so that's a you know, uh, and and we'll see you know there is a there is a line, as, as we look at the second section two and section three, right? Winning with people and uh, as teamwork, there is a, there is a thin line, you know, between serving and being people pleasing, right? So there's a thin line. Okay, so yeah, as a as a as a uh, as a leader, the Lord's example is that we serve. Serve in humility. Let that be the let the mindset be there. I'm here to serve. I'm here to bring benefit. Okay, and it's not by my building myself, taking care of my needs, or uh, it's not that. So it's 
it's totally opposite of how the world would look at leadership right okay okay we'll stop here and we'll continue with um, the two three other things right okay uh, thank you uh, nina and jackin for your inputs thank you we'll stop here and uh, we'll meet next class so next class is um, next week only because we have the leadership um, christian leadership conference 17th 18th and 19th right thank you